don't really know what coordinated universal time is, so I'll just make something up. Uh, 15... Hello and welcome to the stream. Twitch tells me I am now live, as you can see from the lovely infinity um, screen that we're seeing. Uh, today we do have some good stuff on the agenda, for me, not for you. Um, the first thing is, you notice that when I need to switch windows in FVWM2, which is the window manager I'm using, I kind of have to do this, 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 and it's okay when I have the windows lined up so that I can get to any one of them easily, but once I start messing around, that becomes a real pain in the ass. So we're going to first look for um, how we can m change between windows more easily in FVWM, um, especially since we're in an uh, environment where we can't use a virtual paging uh, because I am on a VM and my real machine has paging, so if I, I can leave the VM, but I can't, I can't find a way to make it so that um, I can both have virtual paging in my real machine and on this virtual machine. So that's, that's the issue. All right, so we will go to our good friend uh, Google and say uh, keyboard. I think I know what it is actually, uh, and I think it's like Alt Tab or something, which doesn't work here because those um, because those keys are bound differently in the virtual. So it's Alt Escape, Control Tab, all those keys that whoa, your mama. That was it. Whoa. Ooh. So Alt Tab, no. Control Escape, no. Um, Shift Tab, no. Command Tab, oop, that didn't do anything. The Control Tab, whoa. That's okay. Unfortunately, that looks like it's for Firefox to let me change which tab I'm looking at. It does not let me change X11 Windows. So let's take a look at this. Now this is already bad because they have like a little Japanese kanji thing going on here. Um, so that's already bad. Um, let's see. Change. Oh, and the, see, the other problem is when I do stuff like this, I lose the bottom of the screen. Um, switch. Ooh. Root mean Alt F1. But okay, these are actually how you can bind it to what it does. I'm looking for the defaults. Um... How do I get Alt Tab? Well, this is right up our alley. Unfortunately, I get the feeling that they're going to tell us it's not default behavior. Um. <coughs> Ooh. Starting with release 2.3.2. Okay, so either, yeah, so either the VM, ma you know, the VM manager, which is VirtualBox, is is taking care of this, is uh, blocking those keys. Um, oh, okay, that didn't do it. So let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can find out what it is. Uh, we might have to, we might have to, um, write our own, which I don't want to do because it would require restarting the window manager, which is kind of ugly. Um, um, uh, let's see. Okay, now, all right, not looking too good here. So we don't have a, um, we might have to restart, which isn't hard because we can do it without res, well, we can do this um, uh, with just this restart, but it's still a little bit ugly, so I want to avoid it, although I don't think I can. Uh, keyboard shortcut to switch between screens, I think, I think, um, I don't think it's going to be possible, unfortunately. So, um, not great. I mean, obviously we could put some extra work into this, uh, but it's not built into FVW, unfortunately. Um, I can right-click the mouse, but it has to be in an empty area of the screen, and it lets me switch. And that might be the fastest way to do it, because honestly that, that works on my main machine as well. On my main machine I can also use Alt. No, I can't. Wow. Alt tab doesn't do it. I'm on my main machine now. You can't see what I'm doing. Command tab, control tab. Wow. So maybe it's not defined anywhere. Um, or maybe it's only defined if you're outside of any window, which isn't helpful. So I think we might just use this. Control right, uh, mouse click. Sorry, just right mouse click, and then we can go to which one we want. 
Not a great solution. I'm not happy. But that doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so we'll have to like kind of leave that uh, there. Uh, now, previously when we were looking at trying to find a f closed form for heliacal, um, heliacal, oh yeah, wolf form language, uh, we did come up with this formula that um, uh, that has the product of tangents in it. I mean, it's, it's more complicated than that, but it has um, things like tan dec times tan lat. Um, so although I keep saying I'm going to give up on a closed form here, uh, it would be nice to have a closed form. I still don't think we can get it from uh, this, um, even with some identities here. But I am curious to see if there are any identities uh, for product of tan tangents. Um, and there might be, and they might not be useful. Uh, tangent product identities. Uh, OK, well, this looks like Wikipedia has a pretty good list. Um, Now, of course, we could use the sine and cosine uh, product identities because tangent is just sine over cosine. Um, okay, the Pythagorean, Pyth the Pythagorean uh, identities are just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, this shows you can rewrite tangent of theta in many, many ways um, without only using one of the other uh, trigonometric functions. So we could write it as sine theta over. We don't really want to, because this below here is, of course, just cosine theta. Uh, the verse sine, OK, we don't really need those. We don't. People don't really use those anymore. Um, OK. Still not quite at the sum and difference identities. There we go. Oh, uh, nope, 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 nope. There we go. OK. Sum and difference. Um, wow, there's a lot of freaking identities. Um, Okay, there is a multiple angle formula here. There might not be a, a uh, simplification for, or a useful si simplification for uh, product of tangents. Double angle, triple angle, half angle, Chebyshev method. Wow. Looking at stuff like this just makes me think how little I actually know off the top of my head. I mean, I could probably derive these identities, but certainly don't know them off the top of my head. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Was this? Yes. This is something, wow. That is a good looking identity there. Um, <coughs> um, okay, and in our case, this would be, these are tans and lats. So in our case, um, tan dec times tan lat. So this would become cosine dec minus lat minus cosine dec plus lat. Uh, yeah. And of course, this can also be rewritten again as something else. Um, and of course, we could use things like this, uh, the product of cosines and the product. Oh, I, I guess those are the same, to do something like this. Now, the question is, does that help us come up with a closed form? And the much uglier portion of all this here is the declination itself is a fu is a is a function is a sine wave in the number of days since the vernal equinox. So we actually have tan of sine, and I, I know I'm pretty sure there's no shortcut for that, for the composition of those functions. So I'm not, it's not clear to me that we would get something a lot better if we were to um, if we were to take these products and rewrite them as as sums or actually a, a quotient of sums. Um, I mean, the, 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 the one nice thing might be, well, actually, no, we, because it would be still be cosine of lat plus and minus something else. Then we could, from there, apply the um, sum and difference identities. Jesus Christ. Call in Jesus Christ, uh, the Lord and Savior of whatever. 
Um, okay, so let's see what those. Okay, let's see who we are. Yeah, I'm not convinced that's actually going to be that great because then we will have um, I am not sure. I mean it might simplify it might all simplify out to something so wonderful that we we want to know it um, so we'll have this basically become product of cosines minus product of sines this become Product of sense minus product of science because I'm, so we're gonna, it's going to become really ugly is what's going to happen. The only um, the only question I would have, I guess, is um, is there a way to make Mathematica or Wolfram Cloud spit this out um, without having you know we could obviously define it as uh, our own identity um, and then define the other stuff as our identity too. But the question is, can Wolfram Alpha, or Wolfram Cloud, rather, um, I don't know if Mathix can do it. I, I, I doubt Mathix can do it. Mathix is not very powerful. But let's try it. So tan A times tan B. The problem here is, it's not clear which form is simpler, f not free, full simplify. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't even know what trig does. Okay. Um, so let's see if, well, okay. We're getting into the law of diminishing returns here. These are some really interesting looking identities. Uh, and then we could apply the identities again. And who knows, we might be able to apply them again. I don't know, to go back and forth between these forms. Um, in the hope of finding a, uh, a closed form. Uh, the, the, the reason we want to do this is when we answer the question, having a closed form would be a lot faster than having to do a binary search. Act not that much faster, but somewhat faster. And it also would make a much nicer answer to say, we just solved this equation, and here's the solution, and you know, here's the closed form formula for when the sun rises at the same time, or sets at the same time as uh, this, uh, as this star. Um, so I'm going to keep that on the to-do list because I never remove anything from the to-do list. But, uh, but it looks like we're not going to get a lot of help there. Uh, this is something worth pursuing later on as a, a separate Wolfram Cloud project, uh, just to see how far we can get with it. Um, and of course we were hoping to get a closed form, uh, which, you know, when we're writing up the answer we might still find something that's useful. Um, and then I need to add another to-do, because we need to break something. Um, okay. Now, previously when we did this, we had cases for both refraction and non-refraction. Uh, in other words, we allowed for the case where there was refraction and no refraction, but it turns out the differences are so small um, and so pointless, I think we can get rid of that, actually. Um, so over here, find heliacal date. Uh, for the sun, we definitely do want negative six, because that is that is civil twilight. And we definitely do want, if I push this to get, uh, I've changed nothing. I will push this to get. I will download it as a zip, although I'm 99% sure we did this at the end of yesterday. But hey, nowadays disk space is not that expensive. Um, so we're just going to go from minus six and zero, and for the um, for the star else. Now this is of course doesn't even need to be an array anymore. We're just going to go with this, the one, the one refracted array, which is going to give us the correct value. So um, we could rewrite this code to be more cognizant of that, um, but I think I'm going to be okay with. Uh, Let's go and read these comments and see where it says temp2. Oh, geez. Um, wow. Um, so now we need, we need to, because we have an array here already, um, we have two arrays here. We have a three-dimensional array here, actually. Um, 
So we need to weigh a way of storing this, which I think we can do with the same trick we did before, uh, which is, um, could be a little bit careful here. Um, I think we can just do res nmk, but I kind of want to do a little bit better than that. Um, but let's, let's do that for right now. Okay. And what we actually want is this sucker here. This is the, the final value that we sort of want. And I think and we've got too many parentheses because it was inside of a console log statement. And so that is it. And now here we'll say res of, i be really careful here. I got the vague feeling we tried this and it didn't work for some reason. But let's see. In fact, I'm sh so sure we did that. I'm going to... Um, right, I think it was... Uh, okay, no, it was N. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, I don't know if that ever worked or not, but let's see if it works now. So we're going to try to store the value that we've just computed for this one specific case. Um, into the into the res array, uh, which we will clean up, I think, in a minute. Um, okay, so what am I getting at myself out of now? I'm getting myself out of one thing. All right, that's not telling me where I'm closing my braces. Okay, so we're in three for loops here, so I think we need to go out one, out two, out three, out function. Um, and then down here, we do have a uh, attempt to call that function. Oh, and I guess I had these down here as well, but we can get rid of those. Uh, so now we have a nice fully formed function. We will need to deal with the concept of circumpolarity, but for right now, let's just boogie with this and see what happens. Uh, no, I didn't like it. Unexpected, and tell me what line is that in? Yeah, thank you for not telling me. Uh, oh, well, it's okay, it, it is kind of being nice here. Um, So I guess I cannot, this is nm and k, right? Yeah. Um, and I think maybe, maybe I need to do a let key equals. I'm not sure I can quite get away with what I just did there. Let's try this. Um, oh, actually, because I'm defining an object uh, indice, Something worries me about this still, but let's see. Oh, it ran. Okay, so maybe that was the problem. Alrighty, so now what we want to do is after we get out of the triple loop, but before we completely return, we do want to see what res looks like. And we need to clean it up a little bit. That's really nice, actually. That is, those are the answers we want. Uh, we need to understand what they mean uh, but aside from that, we need to, we we're good. Now, I've got to be careful here. I really don't like the idea of um, of using the indices of the arrays. I'd like to really use the values. The only problem I'm going to run into here is this value is going to be very ugly, which actually means eliminating it would be very nice. But let's let's just try that here real quick. So here we would say, and honestly, we could define them both if we wanted to. Um, over here we could say, and remember we have named these, we have um, the outermost one is going to be sun outs, sun outs. So it's going to be sun alt, the one we've defined here. Um, star alt, and do we bother, to we don't def bother to define time day, we just use it as time day of k. Of k? Oh yeah, because we're at nmk now. Okay, so this be time, date of K. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, time date is not defined, your mama. Time day. Oh, one day I'm going to figure out the difference between day and date. One of them means like Thursday, Friday, 
the other one means like the eighth or the ninth. Okay, so here's the problem is, um, oh, because these are in radians now. Um, Right, so this is this is pretty ugly here. Um, so I think we can do something a little bit more JavaScripty here. Um, the sun outs uh, can be instead an object. Uh, twilight is minus six. Uh, uh, horizon, and by the way, I got the wrong number here too. It's minus thirty-four over sixty because it is the um, it is the uh, Uh, let's see. Because it is the refracted horizon. And then let star outs. Mm. Yeah, we're going to do this because in the off chance we ever change it, it might be nice to have. And that'll be horizon. And I made another mistake here, which I meant to put on the to-do list to correct. Uh, the sun, 34 minutes of arc occurs because of refraction. If something is geometrically 34 minutes below the horizon, it'll appear to be on the horizon because the Earth's atmosphere bends light that way. For the sun, there's another issue. We say sunrise occurs when the top limb of the sun touches the horizon. In other words, when the sun starts rising and it sets when the top limb of the sun disappears. Uh, so again, when it's finished setting. Uh, and since the sun has a non-zero, uh, you know, angular diameter, we need to compensate for it. It's the radius is 16 minutes of arc. So sunrise and sunset are defined as uh, when the, um, when the uh, geometric position of the sun is 50 minutes of arc below the horizon. So I think I've got this nailed now. Um, this should not be doing that. Okay. And so the time of day can also be a, an object. Um, this is probably stupid, but let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's sun outs equals, okay, so we can't really do this anymore. Now we have to do f um, for n in O. Okay. I think we can get an array of sun outs keys by doing sun outs keys, but I don't know for sure. So let's go ahead and see what this does. And so log uh, alpha, just to mark it, sun outs keys. Ooh, I think it's gonna be this, array keys. Yep. Um, sun outs. Um, and I think that should yield an array. Now, whether or not this will run at all, we'll, we'll find out in a sec. Nope. Sun else is not, well, it is defined. Oh, I, I defined it wrong. Hang on. I, that was just a typo. Array keys is not, of course it's not. Why would it be? Um... Is it sun outs keys? Oh, that sounds like it at least compiled. Nope, it lied. Is it this? Okay, that's just, oh, hang on. There. Uh-huh, that doesn't help. Let's see if it's this. Nope. Okay. If I, I could use the in operator, but then I'd have to use maps and it gets kind of ugly. So let's see if we can find a better solution here. Um, list keys in object. So let's see what that does. Oh yeah, that would be probably a good, good way to do it, huh? Except it has to be object.keys you can't do the object name dot keys, which is another it's another reason people hate JavaScript. Correctly hate JavaScript. 
um, because it, it's not very intuitive that the correct way of doing this would be object keys uh, sun else. And that should maybe work. Yay. Okay, so. So let's see, this becomes. Uh, I'm pretty sure that for each is going to require me to use a map or something stupid, so I want to avoid it, but let's see. Let's just double check to see if there's an easy way to do for each and treat it like a for loop. Um, um, now the question is, can we use the for loop in a way that doesn't, is a non-standard, like Perl will let you use a for loop across a list. This is the standard for loop here, but it looks like see for each. Oh no, that this is again the um, the for loop. Wait, yeah, see that's what's. Oh, hang on. Oh, okay, hang on. This may be useful for variable and object. Do something. Um. Yeah, I think that that's probably the, what I was looking for. The sort of alternate for method, and it's not the for each method, but the alternate for method. So I probably don't even need to do this. So what we're going to do is uh, for alt in sun alts do oops, for star, no, 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 no. This should be sun alt singular star alt in star alts. I got to be careful here because these are going to be the keys, not the values. So let's go ahead and just say for K1 and star alts for well, I think we can do this in a two argument form. So we get um, both K1 and B1 at the same time. I think we can do that. Uh, for variable, okay, so can we do two variables in an object, meaning the keys and values? Um, okay, so this is going to give us the keys, and then if you take the, aha, there we go. No, what, what, what? Um, okay, that's good. For let, now is there a better way of doing this? Like let, uh, so close. I was hoping there was a way to get both keys and values in the same sort of chunk. Um, but apparently when you do for a variable and object, you get the keys, you can't, I think uh, PHP has a version where you can get both keys and values at the same time. But here I think we're just gonna be limited to the keys uh, which is fine. We can we can we can work with that. And for and these don't the keys are kind of unimportant to us actually. Um, what we want is the values. So let's see. Triple nest. Um, okay. So sun alt is going to be sun alt. Hello 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 hello. I think Python two. Thank you. NASA called me. Oh Jesus Christ. You've got NASA calling you. Uh, did they offer you a job? Because I might be the next guy to bug you then. What did NASA say? We're all very excited. And if they told you to go to the moon, that could either be a good thing or a bad thing. That could be sarcasm, could be real. Uh, yes, they were worried about what you were doing. Well, you know, that's uh, it's really too bad. Um, I, I do feel that if you can't predict the positions of the planets accurately, uh, you should just move the planets around until they comply with your formula. You know, uh, sort of predicting reality, you make reality respond to mathematics the way God intended. Um, but you were applying for a job at NASA, right? No, no, you weren't. You were just joking, weren't you? I thought you applied for a job at NASA. Um, <laughs> um, Okay, 
So Sun <laughs> of K1, Star Alt of, yeah, you were just, I thought, for some reason I thought you'd applied for a job with them. Um, but that might have been somebody else. Or maybe no one at all. I, I, I have no memory. Um, okay. Um, so I guess the only difference here is time day becomes this K3. Time of day, K3. Uh, la 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 la, la la la. And the only nice part about all of this, the whole reason we do this, is so we can set the res to have some actual meeting. Um, instead of uh, instead of giving it number values that are kind of hard to understand. So if this works, we're freaking awesome. Uh, it won't, but if it does, we're in good shape. <whistles> nice. Whoa. Twilight, horizon, rise. Twilight, horizon, set. Horizon, horizon. Oh, okay, okay. I see something slightly wrong here. Um... So we'll make a minor change here, which shouldn't even require too much code changing. Uh, we do want to make it clear which one, um, let's see. Star Horizon. Twilight is only a sun thing, so Sun Horizon. And this will always be Sunrise and Sunset. Uh, no, actually it's both. It's both when the star and the sun rise and sunset. So now we're kind of picking nits here. Not interested in NASA, to be honest. Well, Mr. Snobby Person. Um, I forget what it is you, that you did and what you were looking to do, because I'm that lazy. So, uh, Twilight, the stars, the horizon, rise, so that will be dawn, actually. Is, uh, dawn, dusk, Twilight is a generic, I think, right? Um, I think Twilight is the generic term for dawn or dusk. Um, so star horizon set. Um, oh, right, right, so this is when it uh, rises at dawn, sets at dusk rises at the uh, rises with the sun and sets with the sun. Let's see if this makes sense here. Um, stars rise earlier and earlier every day compared to the sun. Uh, Al Al <laughs> I think you mean Alzheimer's, but okay. Um, I, I realize your English isn't your native language, but Alzheimer's just sounds like someone has Germanized the concept of Alzheimer's disease. It has Alzheimer's. We make you forget. Um, but, okay, so this actually looks pretty good. This is, I think, what we're looking for here. Um, okay, so now we're going to, there's two things we need to do here that we can kind of, um, well, well, one thing we need to do is actually return res. But that's not a huge deal. Um, okay, uh, at some point we'll have to get rid of this denib crap. I'm getting kind of tired of denib. Be gone. Okay. So now we can go over here to listen. Um, but let's funk it up a bit. There's there's an error message that's going to show up. Uh, let's just do a quick run. Oh, I don't have any d default values put in, do I? Um, let's see. Did I actually have default values and lose them somehow? Maybe. However, we're going to do something more clever here. So let's see. Um, um, let's see. So when someone presses the button, we, we say about to do stuff. We... Um, hmm, let me try something here. Zero, zero, thirty-five. Invalid date. See, that's where we're getting into some trouble there. Um, that's not the error message I actually expected, by the way. Let's see. So, so what badness has occurred here that tells me that the uh, hmm? I haven't considered. Well, let's see. So this is the uh, star that's at the, basically at the intersection of the uh, the vernal equinox and the celestial equator. 
and we want to know when it, I mean the sun actually directly hits that point. So sunrise and sunset should be pretty much on March 22nd. That's actually, oh no, it's twilight, okay. So this value should be okay. Um, I mean, this value should be like March 15th or something. Uh, it should be seven days before the equinox, just like this is seven days after the equinox. Uh, this, I mean, it, it's the equinox, essentially, although it's a little bit funky for the equinox. Um, hmm. So this was not what I was planning to do. This was not what the error was supposed to be. Um, let's see what this does. Oh, that works a lot better. That works the way it's supposed to. Okay, I'm not happy. But for one hour. Oh, you're perfectly happy at one hour. What if we bring this down to 0.25 hours? I just want to see how slow, small we have to get it before. Oh, there's the invalid date. Um, okay, and in this case, this one actually shows up as a valid date. Okie dokie. Well, this was not the error I was looking for. So I'm not happy. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and deal with this error. Um, let's figure out what's going on inside of script.js. Sun info, blah, 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 blah. I mean, the first question is, does the binary search return something useful? Um, so do we have a binary search? Yeah, we do, okay. Um, bin. Well, yes, but I added some new bugs in there just for some excitement. Um, and by the way, this is called regression testing, as I'm sure everybody knows. When you fix one bug, two more show up. It's like the freaking Hydra. Which, by the way, is a, const uh, is a constellation in the sky. The Hydra. Okay, let's see. And I guess we want to console log this too. So we need the... the the binary reference and then date, comma. Come on, do I really want to do that? Um, let me try this. This is ugly, though. I, I probably should assign that to a temporary variable. Um, but hey, let's see what the hell happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you cut off its head on its shoulders, two heads grow back. You cut off its dick, it just gets disappointed and goes away. It's pretty sad. But remember what Austin Powers said. I don't care what he did. Oh, that's a horrible English-British accent. But he basically said, no matter what they do, you can't, you can't do stuff like that. Okay, uh, been about to do stuff. Bad binary search bad binary search um, okay so that that explains what that what's happening there so now let's see why the bad binary search think is thinks it's happening um, isn't it nice the way we have these console logs just commented out? I, I think it's nice. Uh, you're bored. Well, I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do to amuse you? Because I will. Uh, Alright, let's see. Zero, zero, go. Bin search, zero, three, six, six. Blah, blah, zero, one, eight, three. So what are we looking for? Um... Um, let's see. F of A is this. So that's perfectly good. It's a good ba valid binary search. Okay, so three, zero. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
Uh, no, sadly not. Well, actually, it's not that sad, because I was kind of hoping you wouldn't ask me to do anything weird. Okay, so this is still fine as a binary search. Let's make this a little bit bigger here. So, the binary search is... Ooh, your mama. Um... Yeah, maybe I should console log a little bit less aggressively. But anyway, let's go back up here. God damn it, does this thing not have a scroll bar? Maybe not. Ugh! So the moment I do that, it's gonna go... Alright. Not cool. Is there, isn't there a scroll bar here? Nope. Or, oh, because I'm doing this, that's why. There is a scroll bar. Uh, I have to just go find it like this. Okay. Nope, that's not the scroll bar. That's the move, the whole freaking window bar. There we go. Alrighty. So, this is fine, this is fine. Oh. Okay. Binary search. Hmm. Zero to three sixty six. But at the zero value we have this number here, which is bigger than zero, and this number here, which is bigger than zero. So that's not cool. Um The only thing I can think of here uh, is that somehow, I mean, the, the function we send it should begin with the, uh, the negative right ascension of the star. So these numbers should, one of these should always be negative. So something has gone very wrong. Let's figure out what the hell that is. So this will be back here in fine heliac. Okay, so function equals this time day minus star time day. Okay. Okay, I see it. I see it. The problem is going to be that the stars... Um, no, I don't see it. Uh, oh, the star's rise time might be negative, so we actually do need to, I'll do that here, we actually do need to, um, this was an error I talked about earlier that I never bothered to fix, because I'm an idiot. Um, the issue here is that we, we're dealing with uh, right ascensions between 0 and 24 hours, but the function that returns star info can, in theory, return something that's uh, less than 0. And I think that's what's happening here, and that's throwing off everything else, of course. Um, so let's do this. Zero, zero, go. And show me what you got here. Okay. Yep. Yep, this is the problem. Okay, that's not the problem. I can't point to the problem. It's this thing here, the rise of negative time. Uh, that does not work. Uh, for, because we assume this number is positive between 0 and 2 pi. So there's an easy way to fix that. And that is to go back over here. Sun info, star info, uptime equals this. Yeah. Um, uptime, that's still correct. Noon can still RA because we assumed RA is between. Here we need to say... Um, Here we need to say how do we do um is there an fmod function in javascript ay 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 a floating point mod because um um let's see um Oh, I guess you can do 
So the mod operator apparently does work with uh, floating point numbers already. So that's good. So we just say um, rises RA minus uptime mod two times math pi. And we do the same thing for this. Um, and in the unlikely event this works, all of our problems are solved. I mean, in this program, not like in life. Okay. Um, well, it looks like this doesn't actually cr crap out or anything. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, let's see. Uh, bin search, bin search. So the bad binary search occurs. Uh, date? Because that's good, that's good, that's good. Alrighty, so this says the function the binary search starts at point one one and ends at point one three. I guess the only question I'm going to have, oh let's see what the star info looks like. I'm wondering if mod 2 pi doesn't um, okay, great. I have one too. Uh, so either we need to at some point combine forces or kill each other. Or, well, I mean, obviously one of us kills the other. It wouldn't be very effective if we killed each other. I mean, then no one would win or lose. Um, all right, let me see what the star info here is. I think maybe the star info here, which I'm calling gamma, could still be... Oh, it is still negative. So what the hell? Stop doing that. Um... So this did not necessarily help. And the only reason I can think of is because um, the mod 2 math pi gives you a number between negative pi and pi. Uh, that's the only reason I can think of. Um, but let's go over here real quick. This is where it'd be really not well, you know what? Actually, because what we're doing doesn't require any JavaScript ahead of time, we can actually go over here and just do a little test script, which is kind of what I probably should have thought of earlier. Um, so what we want to know is what is the console log of one mod math two times math pi and then same question for negative one and then doesn't really matter because it, anything you can't recognize it'll just stop uh, okay one minus one okay so that's not what we wanted um, so we could do this just gets uglier and uglier we could add 2 pi to it, and then mod 2 pi, and then we should definitely expect a positive number, I think, maybe, I hope. Um, I and mean, I'm this close to now defining my own f mod. Um, and that's correct. This is negative 1 mod 2 pi if you insist everything is positive. So what we need to do is we need to add 2 pi, uh, and then mod by 2 pi. God, that's ugly. And the other thing that's ugly about this is really I should not be pandering to um, JavaScript like this. I should be creating a function or something here instead of just complicating the, the you know, a separate function that fixes all of this instead of a, uh, instead of trying to m uh, tweak the function I already have and continue to add crappy crappiness to it. But anyway. Okay. I'm almost tempted to do this for the right ascension in case someone decides to get smart and put in a right ascension that's negative. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, all right. Let's see you fuck that up now. That's not a request. That was sarcasm. Um, so let's go back over here. Get rid of this. Run a voila. Okay. You're not supposed to stop there. 
We have you sourcing other stuff. Oh, right, because now I actually need to do something. Okay. There we go. There we don't go. Um... Okay. That's not looking good. Okay, so we have... Rise, set... See, these times all look fine now. Um... So the binary search will be going from the like minus four to, uh... Two point something. Okay. Alrighty. Alright, I know I've only been going for 50 minutes now. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to stop. We, I should try to, I'll try to be back within an hour. Really sorry, I do have to stop the stream now. Thank you for watching, hope to be back in about an hour.